Welcome back to Linux. Welcome back to LinuxJobber.com, where we prepare you for Linux jobs. My own name is Sean May Joseph, and my email is showpopulous at gmail.com. So if you have any questions, please send it to me, and I'll be sure to answer your questions. For today's video, we are going to be looking at Puppet. Why do companies use Puppet? Why is it so popular? How do you use Puppet? So first thing we do is go to our website here at linuxjabba.com and then we go to tutorials and you click on Puppet Training. When you click on Puppet Training, you will see um, there are so many modules, about five modules for Puppet. So the first thing we look at is why Puppet? Why do people use Puppet? How does it work? And how do you configure it? Now, the next thing we do is a practical application in a small environment, almost like in a small office. You want to get to use Puppet in there. We we'll see how it works, how to set it up. One thing about Puppet is that in a small environment, how, how you use Puppet is different from how you use Puppet in a large environment. So we'll look at small environment first. Then we we'll go and understand the conventions of Puppet, the syntax, the scripting, how you really code Puppet. Right after that, then we look at a large environment. So if you work in a large environment, how do you group Puppet? So how do you group your um, your machines? So if you have like application servers, your web servers, your authentication servers, your all these little machines that do different things, but then it's a large environment. So there are so many of them. Let's just say you have, you know, upwards of 100 machines now or maybe even 500 maybe even a thousand and you want to group them together just so that it makes sense and it's manageable then we're going to go into all of that so we'll use classes to do that and we'll use templates to do that now finally we look at in a large environment still the practical application meaning we build modules now and get things to run in a large environment so that's what we're going to be doing in this video. In the, in the first video, we're just going to be looking at why Puppet, but that's what we're going to be doing for Puppet in general. So next, let's look at looking at this example here of a bowling alley. Now, a Puppet is not a bowling alley. We're just using this example to explain Puppet. Now, imagine you're in a bowling alley. Now, I'm using this picture here just so that just for those who don't know what bowling is you take the ball you stand here you throw the ball down the lane that's what bowling is so imagine you you are the administrator of a bowling alley or a bowling lane meaning that you run this place here so when customers come you sit your customers on the chair you go and get their shoes so that they don't fall down there are special shoes for bowling and the, the shoes are in the shoe rack over here this is the shoe rack right so when your customers come, you get the shoes, the, the, the right shoes for the customers. You give it to them. They put it on their feet. They go and stand here. They pick up the ball. They throw the ball down the lane. That's what um, bowling is. Now, I'm using bowling to explain puppet. That does not mean that puppet is bowling. So if you look at my drawing here, it says understanding server configuration management server configuration management now there are so many tools you can use to manage plenty of machines right puppet is just one of them salt stack is another one chef is another one ansible is another one there are many tools that you can use but there's a reason why many people use puppets and we're going to go over some of the reasons now and they are, and they all these tools have different strengths and weaknesses puppet has its own strengths and it has its own weaknesses so now understanding server configuration management all these are server configuration configuration management tools puppet is just one of the server configuration management tools you can use either or or you can use them in combination now I showed you an example of a bowling club, right? A bowling uh, lane, right? Imagine that you work in a bowling lane. Now, let me show you an example. So in my example, in my picture that I showed you, there was one lane, only one lane where you can stand there, throw your ball down and it, you throw it down the lane. Now, imagine you are the administrator, 
meaning that you are running this bowling lane this is you right here you are the administrator and let me show you that bowling lane again so you can see so now you're standing here you're the administrator there's a shoe rack here where all the bowling shoes are kept when a customer comes in the customer sits down you check their feet you get the, sh the proper shoe put the shoe on their feet they're gonna go and bowl back to our explanation so now in our explanation here as you can see what's happening here is that is that um, this is a bowling lane and I showed you the bowling lane so now just you're the administrator and you're standing here and a customer is coming in to your to bowl now the shoe rack is on this side here the customer needs to get the shoe get the correct size and go use it over here to bowl so now there are two ways this can happen there's an efficient way to do this and there's an inefficient way of doing this so you can either do this the smart way or you can do do this in a not so smart way now let's look at the differences just so that you can un truly understand why people use puppet now again as i explained to you before puppet is not bowling i'm just using bowling as an example just so you can understand puppet i'm just using it it's just an analogy so now imagine you the administrator when a customer walks into your bowling alley uh, or your bowling club abc bowling club you will check the customer's feet right here when you check the customer's feet you will determine what size of what size shoe they wear and when you determine that you will then go you will go to the shoe rack pick up the customer's correct shoe size bring it back to the customer and put it on their feet then the customer will go and bowl and then they leave so imagine that you have a thousand customers for the day how tired would you be of course you'd be very tired because you've just checked you just walked with a thousand people checking their feet running back to the shoe rack grabbing their shoes putting it on their feet at the end of the day you're tired that's why it's called inefficient companies don't want inefficient because they're paying systems administrators a lot of money they don't want inefficient they want you to be very very efficient so that they can get the best value for their money so now let's look at the efficient way of doing things which is why we employ the guy called puppet so imagine look at you this is you on a couch so uh, this is on a on a chair you're sitting down on a chair you're lounging and the guy called puppet is doing all the work for you so how does this work first thing first is that there's a members list right so there's a members list so every customer that wants to come into your bowling club must be a member because that customer because those customers are members there's a members list on this list here each customer's name is there next to their name is their shoe size so when a customer comes in the customer looks up his or her name determines what shoe size they wear and then go to the shoe rack themselves pick up their shoes and then go and bowl and when they are done bowling they return the shoe back to the shoe rack and then they leave look at you you're still sitting down here lazy relaxing on the chair mr puppet is taking care of everything for you and is checking all of these things again even if a thousand customer comes in there first of all they are all members a thousand customers right the whole bowling club could be very very busy a thousand customer comes in they all check their name at, in, at at different times they check their names on the members list then they go and pick up their shoes pick up their own correct shoe size they go and bowl the whole place is busy <laughs> you the administrator you're still on the chair just relaxing <clears throat> and then as they finish bowling they return their shoe to the shoe rack then they leave look 
at you. You're still sitting down there having fun. You're not involved. Puppet took care of everything for you. This is called eff efficient. And this is what companies want. They want the best use of their time and money. So now that's how Puppet works. And that's why people use Puppet. You just managed a thousand people without leaving your chair. Whereas in this case, each person you would have to do the work manually. You have to go and pick up the shoe, put it on the feet, this and that, everything. And at the end of the day, you are tired. You are very, very tired. So this is the example of Puppet using a bowling club. Now, that will help you to understand how Puppet works. As I said before, Puppet is not bowling. So let's really now let's look at the actual example. Let's look at the actual uh, actual example using Puppet. So now this is your network, and you have computers A, B, and C, and this is you, the administrator. You have to log go into every machine and log into each machine to manage each machine. Again, this is the inefficient way of doing things. So imagine if you have a thousand servers on this network or even on different networks you have to log into each machine separately by the time you finish logging into 700 servers i'm sure you'll be so tired you'd not want to do the job anymore so then we, we don't do that we use what they call puppet so now what happens in this case is that you only have one puppet master you the administrator will log into that puppet master you only have to log in here once once you log in here once all these other machines a b c all the way to a thousand all of them will come here get their own configuration from this puppet master apply it themselves and get whatever configuration they need themselves you only have to do this once you only have to log into the puppet master once i mean well maybe not once but log into a machine you only have to log into that one single machine and configure it and once you configure yourself or you put your configurations on one master a thousand machines can take care of themselves by themselves so imagine in one day you configure this maybe in two hours three hours and then you are managing a thousand machines that's possible but in one day you attempt to log into a thousand servers on this side it will be impossible you would never be able to log into a thousand servers and manage and configure them you'll be very very tired that's inefficient so this is why we use puppets so that we can do our configuration in one place and a thousand machines can go there and get their own configuration run it themselves run the configurations themselves and put themselves in the state where they should be all by themselves that's the advantage of puppet so now that you understand why companies use puppet you understand the advantage of puppet it should be easy now for you to understand how puppet works so now i will go back to i will go back to here i have explained um why puppet and now you should understand why companies use it now in the next video i'm going to go into the configuration of puppet explain how it works we're going to do the actual technical work of logging into each machine create the server and the client and then we'll take care of all of this step by step so thank you very much for watching this video this will be um the first of of these videos and my own name as i said before is shown me joseph and my website is linuxjobber.com where we prepare you for Linux jobs. If you have any questions, please send them to me at showpopulous at gmail.com and I'll be sure to respond to your questions. Thank you very much and have a nice day.